All right, so welcome everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta, and with me, uh, Jamin Patak is here. Hi, Jamin. All right. Hello, Rajneesh. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. So uh, this is the mock interview series. If you want to become, or if you want to get a, your career into cybersecurity analyst, or you want to excel in the field of cyber or of cybersecurity analyst or SOC analyst or security analyst, this interview series will definitely help you out, okay? So the process is going to be as usual. Uh, uh, I'll be the uh, interviewee and Jamin will be the interviewer and he will be asking me questions about specific uh, technology. And uh, based on my answer, he might ask some counter questions as well, okay? So before we go ahead, Make sure you subscribe the channel so that you can you keep getting new videos. And to get the video, uh, the moment we up publish it, just make sure you uh, press the bell icon. Okay. So without taking much time, let's get started. Hi, Jamin. So let's get started. Hello, Rajneesh. So Rajneesh, my today's question is about uh, IPS and IDS. Okay. What is the primary difference between IPS and IDS. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, IDS is intrusion detection system. It's basically used to detect the intrusion, uh, detect any kind of poten potential threat into the network, and um, it basically alert the administrator that, hey, listen, we got some potential threat. Now, admin can decide whether to uh, what action need to be taken, right? Whether he, to allow the traffic, whether it's false positive, so he will allow the traffic. If it is suspicious, he can take further action. On the other side, the IPS is intrusion prevention system, means it will detect the threat, but additionally, it can also take the action itself. Okay, so it is an uh, added benefit to the IDS, but uh, the point is both are important. IDS and IPS both are important at their own, you know, at their, they have, both of them have their own importance. IDS is good if we want to have a complete control on the, on the network, because if you completely rely on the IPS, just like antivirus software and everything, uh, we might come across a lot of, uh, you know, business disruption as well. Let's say you have a mis uh, some policy that by mistake uh, stop some business application. So we might have a business disruption as well. Uh, IDS is good if you want to analyze a network and you want to have complete, complete control over the network. You have a team as well. So it's good for the mature organization. So th that's the major difference. Yeah. Got it. So next question is, uh, can you explain the deployment modes of IPS and IDS? Sure. So uh, you see IPS and IDS both have their own different, uh, uh, you know, purpose. Their characteristic property is altogether different, although they look for almost similar kind of a threat or patterns in the network. But... When, when we want to take an action, okay, because I let's let's talk about the IPS deployment. So when we want to take an action, it has to be very quick, right? So IPS is all about uh, applying the prevention itself, applying the prevention like blocking the connection, terminating the session if it's suspicious, like denial of service attack, right? So if we have a denial of service attack, uh, po a potential denial of service attack, the IP should start blocking those traffic itself. So for that to happen, the IPS is actually deployed in line. In, in line, it means that uh, in the network traffic, uh, you know, uh, pattern itself, it means it should really interact with the real time traffic. Okay. That's the reason most of the time we deploy IPS within the firewall itself. Okay. Most of the firewall appliances, uh, like checkpoint fire uh, checkpoint palo alto cisco firepower they all have uh, you know ips blades in themselves so we just have to activate it if once we buy their license subscriptions 
so we can quickly activate it so that the real traffic uh, it will be inspecting the real traffic and can apply the action there and then th there itself right whereas if you talk about ideas that uh, you know even if we have a delay it shouldn't be a problem because it's all about investigation i'm not saying huge delay it's all about um, it, ideas is like a passive uh, passive component uh, which is typically not deployed in line when, in the real time traffic itself rather uh, we monitor the flow of the traffic by using span by by using copy of the data okay so we can have a network tap which basically takes the uh, copy of the traffic and then it can be sent it to the our idea software so from there uh, we get the real time analytics about what is really happening so the uh, so the uh, you know sock analyst or security analyst sitting remotely can identify if something happening some malicious thing and hap happening into the network this is good for threat hunter this is good for performing you know looking for any suspicious activity performing security investigation so this is how the, their deployment looks different um yeah great explanation thank you this is all about uh, i have for today thank you okay wonderful thank you so much jamin uh, now this You're is welcome. time for the detailed explanation i'll i'll give you some detailed explanation about how IPS IDS really looks okay. So uh, as you can see in the diagram, um, on your left we have IDS. Okay, this is your IDS software. This is your IPS. If you remember, I told you IDS works as in passive device, which takes the copy of the traffic. Right. This diagram is from PurpleSec and uh, very well illustrated. So you can see on the top you have an attacker or maybe anybody this could be the internet or public network this is your web server now what really happening is this is the inline traffic right this is the inline traffic now what i'm doing is i'm actually uh, from the switch okay i have internet then firewall we can also have a router over here then firewall then switch then it goes to our server what I'm going to do is uh, to the switch, I'll actually create, I'll actually set up a tab device, network tab device, where I'll keep taking the traffic copy of this traffic. And then this will be forwarded to the uh, SOC team, which might be sitting remotely. Okay. On the other side, this that's why it is called passive device, which is not really actively looking at the traffic. On the right hand side, we have a we have an IPS wherein <clears throat> IPS is deployed in line. That means it is in the flow of the traffic, right? So it's usually IPS is not an independent hardware. Uh, if it is Palo Alto, that it's already there in the IPS. If it's uh, Fortinet, Fortinet is also having the their inbuilt IPS. Uh, Cisco Firepower is also having their IPS. Uh, what else? Checkpoint is also having their IPS. Additionally, if you're looking for some open source, so we also have an open source solution as well, like OSSEC. OSSEC is the OSSEC is the host-based IPS. Okay, it, it's basically host-based IPS. This means it is installed on the system itself, on the endpoint itself. Okay, for the network-based IDS, which is IPS, which is in this case, sorry, this has to be IDS. Okay. So for the network based ideas, which is to detect uh, network layer, uh, network level threats like anomalous connection, denial of service attack, we'll have to look at the network based ideas or IPS like uh, the network based ideas or IPS. There are some open source example, open source software like Suricata and Snot. Okay. So they they are the perfect example of both this uh, configuration. What do you see? So we can have uh, we can have Suricata over here, or we can Suri have Suricata over here as well, or Snot as well. Usually Cisco firewalls uh, uses the Snot IPS. So this can be an example of Snot IPS in case this is Cisco or Cisco Firepower. Okay. So snot has two 
subscription one is community based and another license based so you can have their community edition uh, software and their rules as well so this is this the what i'm i've just shown you is an example of network based ips and ids uh, if you're talking about the host based ips and ids which is basically looking at the suspicious activity happening on the server then you have to install this ips and ids which is ossec on to the server itself right on the web server and the, on the email server you have to install ossec or the another example is wazoo okay so you can install ossec sorry ossec or wazoo on the endpoint so it will keep looking at suspicious process suspicious file activity file integrity check rootkit check this will perform this will keep looking at all anomalous behavior on this server on the host itself that's why it is called host based host based ids or host based ips okay but when you are looking at the traffic the real time traffic when you deploy it on the network to monitor the suspicious network traffic like sql injection attack like denial of service attack and all those pattern like uh, reconnaissance attack from nmap metasploit uh, attack attempt and everything you use the uh, uh, network based uh, ips or ids like suricata is not okay so these the, these are some examples and this is how the uh, I, ips and ids are actually installed remember just one thing in case of ips when you install inline the benefit is if something happen if it it find something suspicious like uh, there is a met attacker is sending a metasploit uh, session uh, metasploit uh, session uh, the moment the IP is detected, it can terminate the session. Okay, that's the reason it has to be in line. Otherwise, if it is deployed in the passive device, uh, then traffic may pass through and it's already too late to take the action. Right. So this is how the uh, deployment works. And the, these are some of the examples of IPS and IDS. Do let me know if you have any questions. Um, uh, we would love to answer that. And uh, uh, please subscribe the channel so that we we keep coming up with the new videos every every time. Okay, so this is me, and with me we, I have Jamin Patak. Thank you so much.